Hi, my name is Noel Davis with World Composting, and today we're going to do an update on our trash can bin system. This is the system that I made from scratch with just a trash can. I cut a hole in the bottom, I ran some strings across, and if you're looking for more videos, there is a playlist of this system here and uh, some of the information about it. Now, it has been 35 days since my last update after we got the system going again, and we added some Coco Coir last time, and we're going to continue to start adding more food. So like my urban worm bag and my verma bag that I have, I'm going to really start loading this up with food. In fact, it's going to be two of these containers right here going into this system to try to get this really motivated and moving and also make sure that the moisture levels are good. One of these containers is really filled with watermelon chunks, which are going to be fairly moist because it's watermelon is primarily water. And hopefully this will really get these worms activated as there's a lot of sugars in there for the microbes. So with that, let's go take a look at the system and see how it's doing since our last update. All right, so here's our bin. As you can see, the last update was on 4.10, and today is May 15th. I'm just going to go ahead and put this down here, and let's take this off and see how this system is doing. So it's going to take a second to adjust here for the camera, and it looks like we've got a pumpkin seed that was growing in here. We've got a little bit of shirt remnant left over. You can see this pumpkin seed right there. Nice actual root formation on it, but we're just going to go ahead and throw that in. Let's just see here. we got some shirt, though. There's remnants of a shirt, still a little bit of shirt left on here. We can go ahead and leave that in there too, get that going a little bit more. Material looks a little bit dry, but not too bad. Worms right near the surface though, we can see them right already. You can see right there, there's some worms in there right by the surface. That's a good sign that they're up this high. You can see them as we take off this top layer. You can really see them sort of moving around in there. Got some avocado shell, avocado seed. These of course take forever to break down. Oh, that one's pretty soft. It's gonna squish right open there. So that's a good sign. That'll break down really well. Pumpkin seed. All right, so we, as we move down in here a little bit, uh, I just feel the, the shell of a coconut in there that would still in there, but look at that. The worms are doing pretty well in here. This right here is their coconut shell. Still a lot of worms roaming around in there. Unsurprising, probably a great place to hold moisture. Probably some of the food and microbes run down in there and they probably take a while to get out. So that's still in there in the center, which is a great way to put that to kind of hold things back. Not much activity going down here in the bottom. Like we still got these tea bags. There's still a piece of a sponge in here, but they're starting to work on this as you can tell. This is starting to disappear, which is a good sign. So as you can see, this worm right there at the top working working on it, digging into it. So I'm glad to see that. Material starting to look pretty good in, in here. It's more castings. Still lots of worms. There's also, it looks like, uh, I'm not sure if you can see there, but it looks like there's some pot worms on here as well. It's very normal to see those in, in systems. So we're going to put this right back in that center section here. Let me just dig that out again. I like having this coconut husk in the center here because it kind of, if there's any water, I'm hoping it'll kind of run down into there. Let's just move this over to that side. Bury that right back in there. Dig over here a little bit. Again, material's looking pretty good. Not seeing many cocoons, but we are seeing the worms in here. A couple of uh, millipedes as well. I do have those in some of my systems. But this is looking pretty good. Might be able to, I think we're gonna, I think what we're gonna do here, we're doing a large feeding this time, by the way. So as I said, we're trying to kind of keep this going along with the, uh, which is, what's it called? The urban worm bag and the verma bag bins that we've been doing updates on. Let's just dig down here just a little bit more. Sorry, I know that the, look at that. We can see these guys down here. Oh, hold on, this is a, this is not gonna have any, the tea bag that's made of plastic. I'm not sure why companies are doing that, but they are. So, but look at that. Still worms way down in the system down here. Even all the way down here by the paper that's down there. It's a little dry down there, but that's okay. I think we're good though. I think this is doing well, and I think it's time to go ahead and add our new. Well, actually, before we do that, we're going to add a little bit of bedding material in here. This stuff is frozen. 
So I'm just going to add a little bit of bedding. I'm not too worried about it being dry this time because we are adding, as I said, watermelon. Watermelon is incredibly moist. First, we're going to add some other food below that. This, this container right here is only about half full, so it's not quite as full as my other containers normally are. Let's see, I'm opening it from the wrong side. That's why I can't open it. As you can see, this is it's probably even less than half, probably more of like a, a third full, but apple cores, banana peels, some standard stuff that I throw in my systems. And I'm just trying to start emptying some of these things out. And these large systems are really starting to soak up a lot of food, which is great. So there we go. That's in there like that. Spread that out a little bit. Got some orange peels, banana peels, apple cores, pear cores. So a nice variety of food there for the worms to eat. And now what we're going to do is we're going to grab in and throw in a little bit of cardboard on top of that too. And the reason being is that just because this is just going to have so much moisture coming out of this uh, watermelon. Watermelon has a ton of moisture. It's like 98% water or something like that. So I know that this is the outside of the watermelon, not the center, but still a lot of water. We've got a lot of watermelon that we're going to be adding. So this container, though, is basically full. So this one right here is going to be full. These are the chunks in here. And yes, I know there's a lot of red still left on this watermelon. Normally I'm better at peeling them, or I should say cutting them apart, but uh, this one uh, was so large that I had trouble cutting it. Um, in fact, I had trouble, so much trouble because of how large the watermelon was that the knife I had was not quite long enough and I had to cut it from both sides. So I was way, way too much watermelon really for our family. So there's a little bit left over on here compared to what it normally would be. Normally I'm like scraping this out to make sure I get every last little piece of the watermelon. Because of how much I like watermelon. But this time, not so much. So, all right, there we go. This is kind of spread out over the top now. And again, we are going to go ahead and add a little bit of, um, actually, before we put on the cardboard, let me add a little bit of crushed crab and eggshell to this. Again, this is just uh, grit for the worms. Make sure that they've got some stuff they can use in their gizzards. And that's really far down in there. I see a little bit of dust, but not too much, so I'm not too worried about wearing a mask this time. And I think that pretty much stuck to the frozen material that's in there. Now we're going to go ahead and throw... A little bit more cardboard on top here. Just a little bit more. Just as a little bit of protection for the worms. As I said, I don't need any moisture this time. I've been adding wet cardboard typically, but this is not going to need that wet cardboard. I'm hoping this is not going to be too wet, actually. That's the bigger problem with this stuff normally. And we're going to bury this really, really well in here. This is going to shrink down a lot. Put that sponge back in there. So I'm, I don't have to worry too much about this side what's going to happen is you're going to see this collapse down on this side the next time we come back if i remember to to check my video beforehand well you'll all be able to see that this is just this is going to collapse down in there and it's going to look really nice but this is just going to be uh <laughs> it's going to level back out it's going to level back out from where it is right now so hopefully that sort of protects everything i think we're good here to go and that's my update for this system. I think we're ready to let this go back and sit for uh, another month or so, and then we'll come back in and see how it's doing. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. And remember, there is a playlist. Um, I'll see if I can link it down below, but there's a playlist for all these videos here uh, for this trash can bin. I know that I've emptied it out once, and I've restarted it a couple times. And it seems to be doing very well right now, especially with this cocoa coir on top to kind of hold that moisture in. I think it does a little bit better job of that than the cardboard that just lets it evaporate out. So that's it for this update. Thank you for watching.